Hi folks, welcome back to Parabolas 10.1 and this is going to be our third and final video. So we're going to do a couple more graphs and then we'll try some other problems of a different flavor. So let's take a look at equation number four. It says x equals one half y squared plus four y plus 11. And kind of the same as example three, this one is not super friendly for us. So we're going to need to use our completing the square in order to get it into a nicer format. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the one half y squared plus four y on one side, and I'm going to keep the x on the other side, and I'm going to subtract the 11 to the other side as well. Okay, now I'm going to multiply everything by 2 to get rid of my fractions and make my life a little easier. So y squared plus 8y equals 2x minus 22. And now I'm going to complete the square on this side. So y plus half of 8 is 4 squared minus 4 squared equals 2x minus 22. All right, this is going to give us y plus 4 squared equals 2x minus 22 plus 16, or y plus 4 squared equals 2x minus 6. And we're going to say that this is y plus 4 squared factor out that 2, and then have x minus 3. So I'm going to write this equation up above so we can use that to fill in all of our information. So we've got y plus 4 squared equals 2, parentheses, x minus 3. All right, well, I know I have a parabola. And I know that my choices are facing to the right or facing to the left. And that's going to be dependent on my p-value. Positive will mean to the right, negative will mean to the left. So in this case, I'm going to say 4p is equal to 2, which will give me a p-value of 1 half. And it's okay to have fractional p-values. That's why I wanted to show that off, OK? Now let's find our vertex. So it's going to be 3 comma negative 4 because we got to switch the signs 3 comma negative 4 and while I'm here I'm going to go ahead and draw this on my diagram 3 comma negative whoop, that's not the right point 3 comma that's not the right point 1 2 3 comma negative 4 there we go okay now let's find our focus. So because our p-value is positive, I know that means I'm going to be opening up to the right. So my focus is just going to be a half a point to the right there. And I know that's really crammed, but we could find that by saying 3 plus 1 half comma negative 4 or 3 and a half comma 4. Now our directrix is going to be similarly close. Our directrix is going to be x equals 3 minus 1 half, or x equals 2 and a half. And that's just going to be a vertical line right here. All right, and our parabola is going to be facing this way. All right, so I think we can really start to see the importance of knowing how to complete the square, all right, and thinking about which points are important, and then the graph, how much I want specific and how much you can kind of sketch. All right, we're going to skip example five, though it will be part of your final answer key on Canvas, and we're going to move on to example number six, all right. So for example number six, we're going to go ahead and take this equation copy it down below and we're going to move some things at the same time okay so i like to have my um, x values be positive so i'm going to have negative 4y minus 24 equals 2x squared minus 8x 
All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and factor two out of this side. And I'm gonna divide that two away. Okay, now this side, I'm gonna complete that square. So x minus half of 4 is 2 squared minus negative 2 squared. This is going to get me x minus 2 squared equals negative 2y minus 12 plus 4. Or x minus 2 squared equals negative 2y minus 8. Or, last step, we're going to factor out that negative 2, y minus, oh, y plus 4. Okay, now let's take this equation, let's copy it above so that we can use it to fill in the rest of our information. So, x minus 2 squared equals negative 2 parentheses y plus 4. All right. I know it's going to be a parabola, and I know my choices are facing up or facing down. Now we've done a few of these at this point, so I would not be surprised if you're like, hey Judy, I know it's going to be facing down because from here I know I'm going to have a negative p-value. Alright, so let's find out the exact p-value. So 4p equals negative 2 or p equals negative one-half. All right, so we do have a negative p-value, which means our parabola is facing down. Now let's find our vertex. So it's not going to be, whoop, it's not going to be negative two, but it's going to be positive two and negative four, because I have to switch the signs. So two comma negative four. Now from here, let's practice finding the focus without our picture. So I know I'm going to be changing the y values. So 2 comma negative 4 minus 1 half because it's facing down. So my focus is going to be below my vertex. And this will give me 2 comma negative 9 halves. Now similarly, let's practice finding the directrix. Well, I know my directrix is going to be a horizontal line, so y equals negative 4 plus 1 half. Because it's facing down, my directrix is going to be above my parabola. Okay, let's take all of these and put them on a diagram. So I know that my directrix is 1, 2, 3, and a half. All right, there's my directrix. I know my vertex is at negative, or is at two comma negative four, which is right here. And I know that my focus is at two comma negative four and a half. And then I can just sketch the rest of that to give me my graph. All right. We're going to do a couple practice problems that are slightly different, meaning we're not graphing them, but what we are doing is writing an equation for that. Okay, so let's take a look at question number seven. So question number seven gives us a few pieces of information. It tells us the focus and it tells us the directrix. So my strategy for these is draw a picture. No one says I can't draw a picture. So I'm going to draw a picture, see what I get. Okay. Now my focus is at 2 comma 0. That means my focus is here. And my directrix is at x equals negative 2. That's here. Well, from the way this is drawn, I can tell that I'm going to have a sideways pointing parabola. And more specifically, I can say that y minus k squared equals 4p 
x minus h. And my job is to fill in my h comma k and my p. So what I see here is that from here all the way to here is the full length. And that is actually twice my p value. So my vertex is going to be exactly halfway between the orange x and the green line. And where is that? Well, it turns out that is right at the origin. So I can say that this is going to be y squared equals 4px. The only other thing I have to do is determine the p-value. And the p-value is how far the vertex is from the focus. And I can just count and find that it is two units away. So that gives me y squared equals 4 times 2x, or that gives me y squared equals 8x. And there's my equation. All right, let's take a look at one more example here. Let's take a look at number 8. And we're going to start off in the same way. We're going to start with a diagram. So I know that my vertex is at negative 3 comma 2, so I know that's going to be like here somewhere. And my directrix is going to be at y equals 5, so that's going to be like here. So what I can do is tell, find out how far apart my directrix and vertex are, and that distance is 2. And it might be more accurate to say that it's a negative because I know that my focus is going to be down here somewhere and so my curve is going to be facing down. All right, so the general form of this would be x minus h squared equals 4p y minus k and let me fill in my vertex so x minus negative 2 squared equals 4 times 2 y minus 3. Or I can say that this is going to be x plus 2 squared equals 8 y minus 3. The one thing I want to make sure I remember though, it is facing down, so negative 8. All right folks, that's it for this video. Um, for complete solutions, check on Canvas and it should have solutions to all the problems in this practice packet. All right, thanks so much.